Hello, today we are welcoming Elaine Hudson, Associate Professor Elaine Hudson from the Department of Banking and Finance, also Director of Research in our department. Uh, Elaine, thank you very much for joining us today. Great to be here. Uh, Elaine's research expertise lies in the foreign exchange exposure of uh, companies. So we've introduced students to the concept of foreign exchange risk when uh, companies have operations abroad they have to understand that perhaps they need to manage those for for an exchange currency exposures. We would be very grateful if you enlightened us uh, a little bit more uh, in terms of the research that you have done in this area. Uh, yeah, thanks, Amal. Uh, the research, I've done a lot of research in foreign exchange exposure. This particular area of research was looking at the extent to which um, operational hedging affects exposure. So operational hedging is usually measured in academic research by the extent of multinationality of the firm. So um, you can define firms as, say, purely domestic, those that have no international transactions, right up to fully global firms, so firms that operate in all regions of the world. And in between you've got regional firms, for example, that operate just in your own region trans-regional, you know, two regions, three regions, four regions, etc. So in my research where I look at the effect of operational hedging on exposure, we're asking the question which, um, which type of firm from domestic all the way to global is more exposed, which is the most exposed. And what we find is a little bit counterintuitive. We actually find that the domestic firm is the most exposed to exchange rate movements. And that's because the way we study it is, the way we study it, when we measure exposure, we're actually picking up the extent to which exposure, uh, to which hedging is already in place. So if you can imagine, the most global firms are the most hedged in an operational sense, and the domestic firms have no operational hedging. So we in fact find that the domestic firms are the most hedged, and the, uh, sorry, the most exposed, and the global firms are the least exposed, and that's because they have the most complete operational hedging protection. So the reason why domestic firms are so exposed is essentially because they have what's called indirect or competitive exposure. So obviously a purely domestic firm has no international transactions. It has no transaction exposure. It has no foreign currency transactions. But it's highly exposed to foreign exchange rate movements, and I'll give you a really good example. If you imagine, say, a Queensland hotel, right? It's, it's a purely tourist hotel, um, and it has some foreign customers and some local customers. So imagine you have a strengthening of the Australian dollar. It becomes very strong, which it actually did a few years ago. So what happens in those circumstances is, firstly, you've got fewer foreign tourists coming to Australia because it's very expensive to come here. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you actually have Australians more likely to travel overseas rather than, travel, rather than have a holiday at home. And so um, that hotel, even that has no foreign currency transactions, it has all its costs and revenues in Australian dollars, it's actually highly exposed to a strengthening Australian dollar. And that's well understood, the tourism business in all countries, mm -hmm. they're highly exposed to foreign exchange rate movements. So when we're talking about exposure, we could really differentiate between financial exposure, meaning trading of currencies as such, but also being exposed sort of indirectly, as you have just explained, because your operations will be affected by movements in exchange rate. Is that how exactly. I should understand yeah, it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so that distinction between operational hedging and financial hedging is important in a sense. Yeah, because underlying those two types of uh, approaches to hedging, are similar definitions of exposure. So you have what's called direct exposure, and of course it's firms that have foreign currency transactions mm. that, that, that bear that kind of exposure. And you have indirect or competitive exposure, and that is the kind of exposure that firms bear when they don't have any international transactions, mm -hmm. or it's at least that element of their exposure. So in general, the direct exposure, the foreign currency transactions, are actually hedged using derivative instruments mm -hmm. like, like forwards. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas, in general, the indirect exposure is best hedged using uh, operational hedging. Mm 
explain uh, how operational hedging would function, we have introduced the idea of uh, using derivatives to hedge financial exposures. Uh, so how would you go about hedging an operational uh, exposure, as you have explained previously? OK. Um, so hedging in an operational sense. OK, let's think of an example of an Australian firm that has lots of US dollar revenue. So mm. it's a big exporter to the US. Um, if it has no hedging in place, obviously it's going to be strongly exposed to an appreciation of the Australian mm -hmm. dollar. Mm -hmm. The exports become more expensive. Yes. Um, and so it has revenues in US dollars, costs in Australian dollars, there's a currency mismatch. So what operational hedging is about is creating matches. So if a firm was to use operational hedging to hedge these US dollar revenues, it might say, OK, we're going to go to the US and we're going to set up a factory in the mm -hmm. US. So you're creating costs in an operational way mm -hmm. in US dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you have a situation where um, the Australian dollar rises, that is the US dollar falls, you're getting less money um, in Australian dollars on the revenue side, but you're also lowering your costs mm -hmm. because your costs are also in US dollars. So it's a very simple concept. In practice, it's actually very hard for, put, for companies to put in place, very complex, and they normally wouldn't set up factories in another country just simply for hedging. They do it for all sorts of mm. other strategic purposes. But it has that effect. So in the case of Australian companies, is that a particular issue that they're facing? And how, uh, how do they implement um, or uh, their risk hedging uh, if they realise that they, do, they are facing uh, operational uh, operational risk, do they actually implement what you have just talked about in terms of setting up operations overseas? That's a good question. I mean, it, it, we, I'm thinking about it from an academic research perspective. We, we don't really know if companies do this. So if, you, if we're talking about a company that has purely competitive exposure, mm. like our Queensland hotel, mm. we don't really know. We suspect, given my research anyway, where we found that dom domestic firms are the most exposed out of all the types of uh, extensive multinationality. I think we can assume that that these domestic firms that are highly exposed in an indirect sense mm. are not maybe not aware that they're exposed or they know that they're exposed but they think maybe it's an unavoidable business risk whereas in fact they could use the same sort of tools um, as firms with longer term direct exposure like um, for example they're um, exposed if the Australian dollar rises let's say we're talking about US customers, the US mm. dollars falling, they could actually borrow US dollar denominated. Mm. So as the US dollar falls, their revenue falls, but so do their costs because in Australian dollar terms, they'll be paying a lower interest rate. So there are ways that um, firms can, that have no transactions, can actually manage uh, their exposure. And it's just the same sort of tools as terms of direct exposure would manage their exposure. So this might indicate that firms who do face those kinds of uh, operational exposures and if they don't manage them that perhaps indicate as uh, suggested uh, a bit of uh, ignorance about the risk that is involved perhaps. I think so, I think so but I think there's also a little bit, little bit of psychology with these firms. I mean as, as humans we tend to like we, we like to get the benefits of when the markets are going our way, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So they like the idea that if the Australian dollar is low, they're getting, you know... More customers. More customers. Yes. yes. And, and when that's happening, they tend to forget that the Australian dollar can rise. I mm. mean, might have difficulty with the idea that if they hedge using something like foreign currency borrowing, which is, would be a, normally a long-term contract, five, seven, ten years, then mm. the dollar's falling, it's in their favour, then they still have this hedge in place, so they're not getting the full benefit of that depreciation. That's right. So just to wrap up uh, our conversation, which gives us an insight into the differences uh, of uh, hedging uh, in terms of operational versus financial, uh, would you say that derivatives are mainly used by multinational firms in the sense that they are more aware of their risk exposures, they have a more direct foreign currency exposure, and that's where derivatives are mostly used? Or perhaps yeah. domestic firms should think about it, in, in a sense. Domestic firms could think about it. They wouldn't use the kind of derivatives that um, are used for transaction exposure, like forwards. Mm. That, that would not be as, uh, no. appropriate. 
um, but they could certainly use foreign currency borrowing and another mm -hmm. uh, another derivative called swaps which has a similar effect as foreign currency borrowing um, but the evidence is certainly that the more multinational the firm, they, the more they actually use financial hedges as mm -hmm. well, which kind of doesn't make sense because uh, there are, in fact, some firms that are highly multinational that actually state clearly in their annual reports that they don't bother to use um, financial hedging at all. Mm -hmm. And that's totally fair enough because if you're highly operationally hedged, you have operations all over the world, you don't need necessarily to use foreign currency um, derivatives or, or foreign currency borrowing. You don't need to use the financial approaches necessarily. Because you have covered your risk by... By the operation the, by hedging. By operational hedging. Exactly. That absolutely makes perfect sense. And I like that we mentioned swaps because we've introduced swaps as well Good. in our <laughs> introductory uh, derivative unit. Uh, thank you very much, Elaine, for our conversation today. That was uh, very insightful indeed. Thanks, Amal. Thank you.